This is Tony Eldridge with Marketing Tips for Authors, bringing you another video tip to help you market your book, products, or services. Today we're going to look at how to create banners, ad boxes, and buttons for free with a great resource that I've been using for a while now. If you look at my blog, you'll see the red banner with the white letters. I created this with the resource I'm about to share with you. If you go to my home page, you'll see a slightly larger version of the same banner. And if you go to my link directory, you'll see a smaller version of this banner. All of these banners were created with the same free tool that I'm about to introduce to you. But not only can you create banners, you can use the tool to create those small square ads for your products that you may have seen on other websites. Under this video, you will see a link to bannerfans.com. When you visit this link, it will take you to the free site that even the least graphically creative of us can use to create these banners. The first thing you will want to do is create a free account. Bannerfan starts out in the layout tab with a default banner image that you can start to change to suit your own purposes. Each tab has another function that you can use. We will briefly look at them in this video. Above each tab is a preview of the banner you are working on. The layout tab is then divided into two sections. In the top section you can choose your banner size by selecting a preset standard banner size or by entering your own custom size. Note these sizes are in pixels so you may have to do some trial and error to get your banner to the perfect size for your situation. To the right of the sizes, you can select the banner's color scheme. If you choose the gradient fill, then you will be given additional choices of your colors and the gradient mode. So let's go ahead and change the second color to red so we can see how the gradient is affected. Now once we select our colors, we can then select the gradient mode we want. Right now it's set at vertical, so we'll keep it there and see how our changes affect the template above. One thing to remember when using this tool is that you must always scroll down to the Update My Banner button at the bottom and click it to see any changes you make. When we update the banner, we will see how the blue and red colors fill into the banner according to the gradient mode we selected. You can play with these options in the Layout tab to get your banner looking exactly the way you want it to look. In a few moments, we'll be back here to see how we can add a picture to our banner. The next tab we want to look at is the Text and Font tab. You'll see the two lines in the template banner filled in here. You have room for up to five lines of text if your banner is large enough to support five lines of text. Let's go ahead and change the template. In line one, let's put Marketing Tips for Authors in the text field. There we go. In line two, let's put blog tips for authors. Once we get our text in, we can select the font we want for each line. Notice that when we bring up the font choices, we get a small menu at the top. These options are font families. Right now, we're in the script font family, and we will get choices of all the script fonts available to us. If we want to see some familiar fonts, we need to choose the stock family of fonts and we get our familiar Arial, Courier, and even Times New Romans, among others. Let's go ahead and select Arial Bold for Line 1's font face. Once we select the font we want, we can change the size. Let's take a look and see how our current choices have affected the template. Once we get the font face and size, we can then play with the color and the rotation of the lines. Let's look at the rotation choices here for a second. By selecting a 10 degree rotation, we can see how it affects our line 1. See how the text rotated with even a 10% change? Of course, we may get better results with smaller font sizes. Let's change this back to a zero rotation. A great use for text rotation feature will be when we create skyscraper ads. Those are the long, thin ads that run vertically 
on our blog or our websites. The next tab is the Shadow Effect tab. Here is where we can add shadows to our fonts and play around with our fonts a little more. We then get to the Border tab. Here is where we can add a solid frame around our border if we want it or any of the other border types available. The last tab is the Format tab. Here is where we decide whether we want the banner saved in PNG, JPG, or GIF format. Once we choose a format, we can then save our banner to access it later for use or to continue editing it. Now let's get back to our Layout tab and see how we can easily add a picture to our banner. I'm going to run through some quick changes and you'll see how we can generate a decent banner in just a few minutes. The first thing I want to do is change my banner size to 750 by 150 pixels. That will give us a little more room to play with the banner. The next thing I need to do is to tell banner fans what to do with the image. Let's say stretch it to fit the banner and see what happens. Once our selection is made, we need to upload the image we want to use. I'm going to upload the cover of my upcoming video ebook series on creating effective Twitter contest. When we find the file, we just need to click the Update Banner to see the image in our banner. Hmm, it's not exactly what we were hoping for, is it? No problems. All we have to do is tell banner fans to do something else with the image. Let's put the image to the left. Next, we change the background from black to white. Remember, click the Update My Banner button to see the changes. That's a little better, but now we have to tweak the font colors to get it to look the way we want. Let's see how a nice red font will look. Once we find a color we like, we can just copy and paste the color code in the other lines to easily get the same color on each line. Okay, let's update our banner. There, now that's much easier to read. Now we can quickly change the font style to something more familiar. Let's say Arial. After we get the font color and the face the way we want it, we can then drag each line around the banner to get it in the precise position that we want it to be in. We can then choose a border if we want it. Now once we get the banner looking just the way we want it to look, we need to save it so we can access it when we need it. But we can also download it as a finished banner to use in our website. Our last option, if we wish, is to get the codes. You'll see every type of code you can imagine. You can use your new banner on MySpace with MySpace codes, on your blog or websites, or you can simply link to it. Let me talk about the URL for a second. If you get codes for your banner, banner fans will link your banner to their page by default. So if you want someone who clicks on your banner to go somewhere on your site, you'll need to update the URL and then click the Update Codes button. Let me type in Marketing Tips for Authors. Now when I update my code, my destination link is added to all the codes. One thing I like on this page is the last code linking to a direct image of my banner. By pasting that link in a browser tab, I can get a clean preview of how my banner will look. There, nice and clean. That's it for banner fans. By using this simple tool, you can create nice looking banners and boxes at no cost to you. With a little practice, you can start to create the banners similar to the ones on your favorite sites. My name is Tony Eldridge and I'm so thankful that you spent this time with me as we looked at how to create your own banners at no cost. I look forward to seeing you on our next video tip for authors.